I'm Tom Cooper, Executive Director of Sandestin Owners Association, and you're watching Tom Talks. On today's Tom Talks, this would be episode seven, we're going to talk a little bit about a submission from a homeowner that we had. <clears throat> that submission is, can you discuss how we can increase security and possibly have a Walton County Sheriff's Department precinct here at Sandestin or on Grand Boulevard. Um, so let's tackle the first part of this. We're going to have two parts. The other one will talk about 911, but we'll get there shortly. Um, just kind of an overview of security. We have 48 full time officers, and we add personnel during the busy season uh, if we need it. Uh, currently, we have two open positions, I believe. Um, the labor market and the panhandle is tough on many folks, but it's also tough on security. Qualified candidates for open positions are scarce. We don't want to just hire a warm body to serve you. We want to hire somebody that we feel is qualified and is going to represent the core values that we have established here at Sandestin. Um, but nonetheless, when we run into a challenge in the season or off season, um, staff shortages are augmented um, by the use of overtime. We've got a couple guys here that really enjoy overtime and they love working for you and they love working for Sandestin, so they fill in um, when they can. <clears throat> so how do we increase security? Well, if we increase security manpower, that obviously um, costs money. Um, it's not to say we can't do it, um, but we think that currently from a manpower perspective, we're, we're pretty much where we need to be. So you have to look at alternatives such as technologies, um, enhancing those technologies. Security Director Jimmy Willis, our Security Director, is um, actively and continuously researching and speaking to his peers on technology. Technology, too, has come a long way. It's very expensive, obviously, but um, if it's valuable, and we feel that it would help supplement what we do here. The board of directors generally is uh, all for it, and we put um, these measures in place. Um, strategic locations for security cameras are key. We um, currently have cameras, obviously, at all gates. We've installed cameras at the traffic circle behind Hummel Pool, um, and Jimmy is also looking at other locations. You have to you have to balance cameras with privacy, so we don't want a camera staring in somebody's back porch or back patio or their front yard or front door. So we have to be very careful where we put those, and make sure we we're putting those in strategic public areas. <clears throat> Um, we did upgrade cameras recently at all the gates to an artificial intelligence module. Um, I didn't know this, but cameras have to learn the community, so they're currently in their education mode, if you will, and that takes about 30 days, and then the um, staff can be trained on how to use the artificial intelligent cameras. We can probably go into a whole Tom Talks on the cameras at a later date, so I won't get into it here, but they are... Um, are being used at the security gates. Um, working with our law enforcement partners, the Sheriff's Department is um, here when we need them. They're generally speaking have a rapid response to all, emergence, all emergencies that happen on property. Um, they work with us, they worked with us very well in the recent events um, that happened in September. Um, and we are very honored to have them um, here servicing our community. Another, another thing that we can do, um, you homeowners are, are our eyes. There are just a few security officers working on a shift, but there's a lot of homeowners. And um, the old adage, if you see something, say something, holds true here. Sometimes you see something that might look out of place, and it may not be out of place, but then again, it might be. So um, contacting security when you see this stuff um, is very important um, to our mission and, and protecting you. Um, <clears throat> Sandestin overall is um, 
we're very unique. I think we're very lucky in our surroundings. We're not surrounded by um, a demographic that would bring high instances of criminal activity such as you would have in a metropolitan area. But um, nonetheless, we do track um, criminal activity. And um, this is a uh, this is through the about the middle of October with every call that security has responded to um, and that's about 3400 um, and if you look at this chart um, what I what I look at is towards the back or the bottom of the chart if you will um, and these are our more higher crimes if more uh, the, the, the criminal activity, if you will. So we have criminal mischief, burglaries of vehicle, commercial, um, business alarms, balcony throwing. Those are all small. I mean, you're, you're looking at two, four, six, seven calls of 3,400 over the course of the year. So to say this is a crime ridden community is not necessarily accurate. <clears throat> so I think um, between our homeowner's diligence and our security team doing a pretty good job with uh, with keeping the, the element down. I think that that speaks volumes. So we talked a little bit about <clears throat> we talked a little bit about the sheriff's department um, and bringing a substation in here. Now we we have been speaking. I have been speaking to the sheriff's office about location of a substation here and lo and behold I find out that they actually have a satellite office down in a condominium complex off of uh, scenic Gulf Drive or uh, off of old highway 98 that they currently use uh, but we are trying to see if we can find them some space a little bit closer to Sandestin that um, might be beneficial to us haven't found that yet we thought we had we thought we had some space, but it didn't pan out. But just so you know, the sheriff's substation is 9.3 miles from here. From my office, it's 9.3 miles. The deputies don't hang out at the substation. They're assigned on the east side. They're assigned on the west side. Uh, you have two or three deputies down here on, on this end of the county, in the south end of the county at all times, as long as they're not on another call. But they're here, and their response time um, based on the priority is pretty quick. So um, there was a question about the substation at Seascape. That substation is no longer there. They abandoned that a few years ago. Now they do have a command post that um, they bring in during spring break. As you know, it's very busy down there. Uh, so they do bring a command post and stage it there during spring break, but there is not a substation at Seascape anymore. Yes, there used to be, but it's not there any longer so moving on the next thing that is very important to me uh, and should be important to you too is your residential addressing now 911 is uh, a lifeline in an emergency and generally what happens if you dial 911 if they have time if the 911 dispatchers have time they will let us know they're on their way if they do that, we can stage and we can send an officer to the location and we can have an officer at the gate to escort them to exactly where they need to go. No harm, no foul. They get right there, they conduct their business and none the wiser. But it doesn't always happen that way. So having your address visible on your home or in front of your home day and night is very important. And you need to make sure that you can see your address even in the dark because if you know where it's at and it's dark but the 911 responders do not know where it's at they can't see it and minutes um, can be a lifesaver uh, in some emergencies so help us help you um, the ordinance from Walton County requires that you have uh, visible numbers on all structures. The SOA ARB guidelines require numbers to be visible. And technology has made great strides over the years. 
um, with the advent of Google Maps and Waze and whatever other ones are out there. But it's not a perfected science and everything that we can do to help the responders um, is very important. So that said, that kind of concludes our, or it doesn't kind of, it concludes our Tom Talks for this week. Um, hope you enjoyed it and please, as always, let us know if you have a topic you would like us to discuss. Please send it to SOA at SOAowners.com and we'll take it into consideration. So until the next time, have a great day.